I tried making a video on Kabulmon when the mod first came out, but I didn't like how it was turning out, so I'm gonna play it for 100 days instead. And no, I'm not doing hardcore. Tried that in Pixelmon once, and it ruined the entire experience. Obviously, the first step to any Pokemon journey is picking your starter, and there's no way I'm picking anything else when Turtwig looks this adorable. Turtwig's always been cute, but look at it in Minecraft. First thing I did was slaughter a Baneri. Should be mentioned, I wasn't playing a random Cobblemon mod pack. I was playing my own creation, which at the time only had two mods. Cobblemon and Xero's minimap, however you pronounce that. I was looking at said minimap and saw something in the nearby dark forest. That's a woodland mansion right next to where I spawned. So instead of doing things with Cobblemon, my priority is now to take over that mansion. I found an apricorn tree, and after getting some stone for tools and ignoring that copper, I chopped down the tree, and then it got dark. Now I don't know if people generally play Cobblemon on peaceful mode, but at least for the time being, I wasn't. So I spent the whole night being harassed by monsters and getting an apricorn seed. Eventually, the sun rose, and there was a haunter. Day two, I found more apricorns. Then I set sail, or row, to try finding a village to get food. Also, apparently Turtwig fainted. Sure enough, there was a village across the lake. I walked up to it and saw Growlithe. So now I've got to try getting Pokeballs. I know it's a tad bit overrated, but I want an Arcanine. And it turns out that this village sucked. It had like five buildings and literally one hay bale. Well, I didn't want to take your crops, but you leave me no choice. I started cooking some potatoes and then went out to find some copper to make pokeballs. On the way, I killed some cows, which broke my axe, so I had to beat up this mill tank by hand and it took forever. I did find a cave that could have had copper in it, but it was guarded by a skeleton, so that's not happening. At this point, the sun was setting, so I returned to the village and slept. Day three, it was time to get to work. I grabbed my baked potatoes and started heading back to where I left that copper on day one. The way there, I noticed that when I enlarged the minimap, it went behind the Pokemon UI, which looks a bit strange. So I changed it to being on the right side of the screen. Anyway, I arrived back at the chopped down apricorn tree and got myself some copper. Then I almost killed a Geodude, but it destroyed Turtwig. So that was annoying. Anyway, I went all the way back to the village, harvested some apricorns. Turns out you don't have to destroy them, you can just pick them up and they grow back. And then I made myself eight Azure Balls, and began trying to find a Growlithe. It ended up getting dark fairly quickly though, and after a Creeper tried to sneak up on me, I realized that trying to catch a Growlithe at night might not end well, so I went to bed. Starting day four off with the jump scare, I was ready to spend a whole day searching for one measly dog. And I did! I mean, I found some apricorns, poked around the area a bit, but I spent all day doing this and didn't find one. And of course, it got dark, so that wasn't great. I tried sleeping, but by this point there were too many monsters, so I booked it to try getting them to despawn. On the way, I chucked a Pokeball at a Zubat, it broke out, and a Creeper almost got me. I ran back toward the river, where I found a stronger Zubat, who I knocked down to low health and managed to catch. Day 5, I killed a Jigglypuff and chopped down some trees for apples to try getting leftovers. I also looked it up after this, and somewhere I read that Growlithe spawn in villages, which is exactly where I found the first one, so I guess I'm searching there. Day 6, I was hanging around the village when Turtwig grew to level 18. Everyone take one last look at the beauty that is this Pokemon. Not that Grottle's not cool. It's just not as cute. Then I headed over to a snowy mountain where a pineco was having some problems. There was nothing up here, but I can see a ruined portal. Headed over to it day 7, couldn't take the gold chest plate, it had curse of binding. Zubat, what the heck? Then I went back to the village and just waited for Growlithe to spawn. It was literally the first thing I found here, and I just cannot find another one. Then Zubat got destroyed by a deerling, and that's not good considering this thing needs friendship if I'm ever gonna get a crowbat. Day 8, I'm just in the village, slaughtering Wooloos. Killed a Pidgey and it dropped a sharp beak. Day 9, I lowered my render distance to try forcing more Pokemon to spawn in the village. About halfway through the day, I was atop the Cleric building, when I saw a Growlithe. I jumped off the house and booked it over to that side of the village, 
I started a battle with it and threw a great ball, and at long last, I had my little fire dog. Unfortunately, I had flash fire as an ability, but I'm sure as heck not trying to get another one of those. After all the wooloo mutton I had was done cooking, I rode back over to the Woodland Mansion and made a leather tunic in preparation of taking it on. I also saw that Safari Balls had a higher catch rate outside of battle. I then realized I forgot to bring a bed with me, so I headed back to the village, testing the Safari Balls on a basculet, and then slept in the village. Before recording day 10, I checked the wiki to see if Basculegion was in the game, and it's not. But while on the wiki, I saw that Zubat can ride on your shoulder, and it gives you slow falling. Anyway, the Dark Forest was full of a lot of cool Pokemon, and also Paris, who poisoned Growlithe. And I guess that killed him. I headed up to the Woodland Mansion, and a ruined portal had generated right next to it. The fire hadn't spread too far though, so I put out the trees, and while doing this, I saw a Mizdravis, which I wanted, and I caught. And then... Yeah, it's too late. Day 11, I had a plan. I ran away from the mansion with the idea of coming back while it was raining. I was wandering around my spawn point when Zubat took out a level 29 Nuzly, which grew him to level 22, and thus allowing him to evolve into Golbat. Unfortunately, he still needs a lot more friendship to become a Crobat, but we'll get there. At this point, a lot of my moves were at low PP, so I needed to make a healing machine, which requires iron ingots. So I went into this ravine that had a mine shaft and started collecting iron. That was until I completely messed up and died. That's awkward. Thankfully, none of my items landed in the lava. I don't know how, but I'm not complaining. Then I spent the rest of the day exploring the mine shaft and mining iron and copper. I did find a spider spawner, which gave me not the most useful things for Cobblemon. Then I found a Feather Falling 4 book in a minecart chest. Day 12, I was still in the caves, collecting iron. I had also installed the Just Enough Items mod by the time I made it out, and got a rabbit's foot from killing a Baneri. Then it got dark, but because I had accidentally left my bed at the Woodland Mansion, I had to go back to the village to get another one. Day 13, rather than heading back to spawn, I decided to explore the nearby forest biomes in hope of finding a Scyther, since Scizor is my favorite Pokémon. Can we all just take a moment to appreciate how phenomenal the Pokémon models are in this? Then I saw something in a cave, which it turns out were shiny stones. I went through a dark forest and found a shipwreck, which gave me a buried treasure map. I completely forgot about it though, and got distracted by a lush cave. I fought some monsters, and then slept down there. Day 14, I went for the buried treasure. I couldn't take everything, but there was some iron and diamonds, which was pretty good. Chose the worst place possible to build up, it's mostly water. Then I began heading back towards spawn, and on the way, I found an Eevee. I thought it might be rare, so I caught it, giving me a full team of six. By the time I reached spawn, the sun had set, so I had to sleep. Day 15, I installed the Nature's Compass mod. All it adds is the Nature Compass, which allows you to locate specific biomes. So I chopped down a couple trees, crafted some iron tools, and finally the healing machine, and then made the compass, and used it to track a jungle, since I thought Scythers might spawn there. I looked it up after this, and I was right. I also had an idea of making a super cool jungle tree base. I was beginning to lose interest in the Woodland Mansion, so I took everything I needed the most, almost forgetting my bed and the healing machine, that would have been bad, and I didn't make it very far before it got dark. These days feel like they're lasting for two minutes. As I was running through the forest though, I was just getting tired of the monsters. I was just trying to play Pokemon in Minecraft, and I couldn't do anything after it got dark because of all the hostile mobs. So... I put the game on peaceful mode, and I made it to the jungle. Didn't find much, although I could see a savanna in the distance. There was also a ruined portal, but I was able to contain it before it got out of hand. But of course, day 16, I knew that Scyther spawned here, so I'm staying for a bit. I spent the whole day running around, chopping down some oak trees, why did these even generate here? I also picked out what I was pretty sure was and was completely wrong about the largest tree in the jungle, and shows it to be the starting point for my base. I didn't get much work done today. According to the wiki, Scyther only spawn during the day, 
so I didn't want to do much at night. Day 17, I got to work on my base. Spent some time wrapping a staircase around the big tree, then I planted some of my apricorn seeds. I, for some reason, didn't bring my actual apricorns with me, so I need these to grow. As the sun was setting, I went out to see if I could quickly snag a scyther, and found a butterfree with oddly colored wings. Turns out this is a Valencia butterfree, but in the moment, I didn't know that, so I caught it, thinking that it might be cool. Kept working through the night, got this little platform built near the top of the tree, and then a crowbat spawned. One day, I hope to have one. Speaking of that, I decided to keep both Golbat and Eevee, who can ride on my shoulder, outside of their Pokeballs, to try raising their friendship. Eevee has a plus attack nature, so I narrowed down my evolution options to Flareon, Umbreon, and Leafeon, and decided to go with Umbreon, since Flareon and Leafeon's types were already covered by Grottle and Growlithe, neither of which I was planning on replacing anytime soon. Day 18, I created a PC using four iron and two glass. It's little things like this that make Cobblemon better than Pixelmon. Anyway, time to look at the Butterfree. Now that I knew it was just a slightly different looking version of the normal one, it's kinda lame. Anyway, I wanted to make a bunch of Pokeballs, so I made the journey back to spawn. On the way, I encountered a Pichu, which I thought might be rare, so I caught it. I don't know what I was thinking, piling myself with more friendship evolutions. Speaking of which, once I arrived at spawn and collected everything useful out of my chest, I noticed that Golbat's friendship had increased, but Eevee's hadn't. I thought it might be because Eevee was on my shoulder, so now he's just gonna be walking around. Day 19, I came across a panda, which really caught me off guard. I forgot normal Minecraft mobs could still spawn. <laughs> also forgot to mention, I got Frostwalker gold boots from the ruined portal in the jungle. Speaking of the jungle, I forgot to waypoint my tree base, so I had a lot of trouble getting back. But I succeeded, so we're all good. Using some bones I got earlier, I sped up growing some of my apricorn trees. Then I made some net balls and sport balls. Those seemed like they were pretty decent. And I know I said I was going to use rain to put out the mansion fire, but I'm not going all the way back there anytime soon. Day 20, I needed some dirt to expand my apricorn farm, but that was mostly an excuse to run around the jungle in search of Scyther. And I was just about to dig up my dirt, when I found one, I started a battle with it, switched to Grottle, and began weakening it with moves that did very little damage. I threw a netball, and threw a second... After getting my dirt, I went to the PC and swapped Basculin for Scyther. I'm not using that thing until it can evolve. Speaking of evolving, earlier on I had looked up how to evolve Scyther, and found that you need to use a link cable on it while it's holding a metal coat. Alright, metal coat recipe's not too bad. What about the link cable? Surely it's not too difficult to make. I am not about to speedrun this game just to get myself a dang scissor. I went to the Cobblemon wiki to see if any Pokemon drop chorus fruit, and realized that all four Gen 1 trade evolutions have a 5% chance to drop Link Cables. So I grabbed my healing machine and headed out in search of some form of windswept hill. And I did find one before the end of the day. Pretty early into day 21, I found a Machoke. It didn't drop a Link Cable, but it did drop a Muscle Band, which I can apparently use to make a Choice Band. I also found a second Machoke, so I'm either getting lucky or they're not that rare. Hopefully the latter. I did find a level 19 Tyrogue though, which I thought would be fun to evolve. Once night hit, I ran around the nearby forests, since Machoke is a day spawn. Normally, I find Haunters galore within the trees, but obviously, now that I actually need them, they're not going to spawn. Day 22, Gravelers started spawning, but I didn't get lucky with those either. At night, I made my way to a dark forest, since Haunters spawn there. Day 23, I found my first Haunter and didn't get lucky. I went back to the wiki to check a couple things, and seeing that Machokes were apparently common in the hills, I decided to head back. Unfortunately, by the time I got back, it was late. But while on the wiki, I had seen that Valencia Oddish spawn at night in savannas. So I went down there, 
and found both a Gloom and a Vile Plume, who were way too high level for me to take on. I finished the day by poking around a cave, hoping to find some Gravelers. Found one immediately on day 24, but it didn't drop what I needed. Then I spent most of the day atop a mountain trying the low render distance thing, which didn't seem to work at all. I went back to the cave at night, finding a lot of iron ore, and also a thunderstone, dawnstone, and two leaf stones. So, uh, it turns out that the trade evolutions used to drop link cables, but in the most recent Cobblemon update, they don't. And the wiki was never changed to mention that in the list of items Pokemon drop. So until they become chest loot, the only way to obtain a link cable is going to the end. So for now, I'm not getting a scissor. Anyway, I made my way back to the jungle and grabbed Tyrogue out of the PC. I leveled him up by destroying Eradicate, and he evolved into a Hitmonchan. I also used some gold to make 16 Ultra Balls. Day 26, I constructed a diamond pickaxe, and then used the minimap to locate a nearby lava pool. I went over to it, and witnessed the tragic death of a doduo, and then I mined up a total of 20 obsidian. As you can imagine, this took a while. Obviously, I'm trying to go to the nether, but for that, I need a nether portal. And for that, I need to dig a hole. My idea was to make an underground storage workshop portal room, and as I was digging, Golbat could evolve. At long last, I finally have a Crobat, and also a Nether Portal. Went in day 27 and literally spawned right next to a Bastion. I decided not to go through and loot it since I was in peaceful mode and that felt kinda cheap. I had to dig a bit, but eventually I arrived in a more open section of the Nether and found a coughing who I caught. There wasn't a whole lot in the Nether, but Cobblemon's still pretty new, so eventually there will be more. But for now, I'm catching Slugmas. While there, I finally started leveling up Eevee, since switch training off high-level Pokemon worked well, and I got him to around the level of everyone else. Day 28, I used my nature compass to point me in the direction of a deep dark, since I wanted to go through an ancient city, and there was one not too far away. I was starting to close in on the biome when I found what looked like a massive cave system, which I began heading through. The distance numbers started getting a bit janky, so I figured I was close, but I gotta mine up this water stone first. And then I found it! The Deep Dark! Unfortunately, this little section was the only section. It wasn't far above bedrock, and I couldn't see any more skulk on the minimap. So I set the compass to locate a desert, in hopes of finding a desert temple. By the time I reached the surface, the sun was beginning to rise. Which brings us to day 29, the day where I found a Spinda and decided to catch it. The desert wasn't too far away, I just had to go through this bamboo, and pretty quickly I could see some badlands. The badlands weren't too big, and the desert was right behind it. I was worried the desert would be absurdly small, but it was a decent size, just split up into islands. I was using my ice powers when I noticed a star use swimming in the water, and I had two water stones, so I caught it as well. Using the mini-map, I saw a shipwreck, but one of the chests in it did this weird thing where it takes forever to load, and in doing so, the buried treasure map became a normal map. Well, no buried treasure, but I found a buried portal. A hat! I now have a full set of enchanted gold gear. Yeah, it's garbage, but it looks pretty nice. Then I found a desert temple, and it was a race against the clock to get down there before a Pokemon spawned on the pressure plate. Unexpectedly, that Pokemon was almost my own Eevee. The loot was... trash. Only took the bones and string. Then I crossed over a little hill and found a village, which was completely useless. There were no interesting professions. I started making my way toward home when thunder struck out of nowhere and startled me. Then I turned around and an Arbok was breathing down my neck. So that wasn't very calming. Yeah, I had to traverse these lands as the world seemed like it was trying to kill me. In the end, I got this epic shot though, and it was all worth it. Day 30, it still seems like the world was ending, at least for the first few minutes. Eventually, the rain stopped. I was so far from home that by the time I arrived back at the jungle, the sun was setting. 
So I grabbed my Staryu from the PC, for the time replacing Scyther, and used a Water Stone to evolve it into Starmie. Then I harvested Apricorns and ran around the jungle beating up random Pokémon with my new Starmie. Day 31, I started carving out a storage room, and during this process, Eevee reached enough friendship to evolve. But since it was day, Espeon and Sylveon were the only options. So I kept working until dusk, when I was informed that it could evolve again, and Umbreon was an option. I evolved Eevee, and dang does Umbreon look good in this. Continued work on the storage room, got a nice little window in, and also started moving stuff from my current chests to the new ones. I finished that up day 32, and then looked at how to make an oak rope bridge. I had installed the Macaws Bridges mod, which adds a lot of cool bridges to the game. I spent the rest of the day building one from my main tree to another one. Day 33, I was continuing the rope bridge. Got pretty lucky that my bed was there. Anyway, I finished the bridge and made a little platform on the tree, and then added a little vine ladder up to the top of the tree. And remember how I said that I picked the biggest tree in the jungle? Well, I was very much wrong. There's like six or seven that are clearly larger. I don't know what was wrong with me. Went into the nether day 34 with a nature compass pointing me toward a nearby basalt delta. I wanted basalt for the storage room, so I spent some time mining up a few stacks of it. Then I poked around the nether a bit more, training up my Pokémon. Then I killed a Sizzlipede and it dropped Blaze Powder, which unlocked a crafting recipe for a Magmarizer. So I used the Just Enough Items searching system, saw that Electrizers and Magmarizers could be crafted. I also saw a Magmi like 20 seconds later, so that was ironic. Spent day 35 using all of the basalt that I collected for the storage room walls, and also continuing to train my Pokémon. Day 36, I put Pichu on the team because when you equip one, which looks adorable, it gives you speed. So I quickly harvested some Apricorns, and started going back to the desert, since I looked it up, and it turns out that's a pretty good place to find Firestones, which I needed to evolve Growlithe. I found a warm ocean ruin that generated weirdly far from the water, and then explored a cave. I did see some Amethyst Geos on the map, so I dug to one, and got myself some Amethyst Shards. Day 37, I used the mini-map to see if there were any caves close by. First one I found had another Geode in it, but that was about it. Then I went over to a ravine and saw what looked like it could be a Firestone. So I went down, mined it up, and BOOM! Firestone. I immediately used it to evolve Growlithe into Arcanine, and then gave him some much-needed moveset improvements. And with that, I just started decimating everything. No Maractus was safe. Not even a Gyarados could withstand the power of Arcanine. Until an Arbok used Mud Bomb and obliterated him, but he had a good run. Then I went back to the desert village where I saw Sizzlif, which I caught, and then I stole all of the villagers' hay bales, and kidnapped a man in a boat. Spent day 38 heading home, got jump scared by an onyx, and then upon arriving, a thunderstorm started. Then I spent day 39 chopping down trees. That was pretty much it. Day 40, I woke up to a diglet on my stairs. A crime punishable by death. Anyway, I beat up some other Pokémon and spent most of the day clearing out an area to put villagers. Day 41, I headed toward the savanna to get some acacia wood. On the way, I knocked out a Golduck with Grottle, and it reached level 32, which I was then informed was Grottle's evolution level. So I evolved him into a glorious Torterra. Just look at that thing! Then I spent all day chopping trees until my axe broke. Day 42, I started working on a place to keep villagers. Then I came across a Mawile, which I hadn't seen in all of my time living here, so I caught it and went back to working on the villager house. Day 43 started out pretty lame. I was just working on the house until a freaking level 50 Scizor just spawned. Because it was so high level and my Arcanine had a minus special attack nature, I thought the thing could probably survive a flamethrower. And it didn't. Worst part is that a Scyther was mocking me from across the lake. So I finished framing the walls and went to bed without a Scizor once again. Good news is that this whole villager nonsense was part of my plan to evolve my Scyther into a Scizor, so it wasn't that bad. 
day 54, I finished installing windows, and then I had to go back to the savannah for more acacia wood. While there, I found an arbok I thought had a cool pattern on its... chest? Do snakes have chests? Anyway, I caught the Arbok, and while I was at it, I also caught a Yanmega, which I decided to put on the team in place of Hitmonchan. It had a plus attack nature, and less than ideal moves, but I was only gonna use it until I got Scizor, so I could live with it. And then I spent day 46 just putting on the roof! Day 47, I chopped down some trees and used the wood to finish the villager hut. Then I moved the villager inside, making him a librarian, and then headed back to the desert village for a second. Because as I said in the previous 100 days, one villager is one villager too few. And of course, it takes a whole day just to get back to the jungle. Day 49, I made one of the villagers a Fletcher to sell sticks to and buy arrows from, and then had to go get some sugarcane. As I was searching for some, I found and caught a pincer and then collected and planted my sugarcane. Day 50, the halfway point, I swapped out some of my golden armor for iron, and then made a small melon farm, since pretty soon, I was going to need food. Day 51, I planted a white apricorn tree, the only one I didn't already have, and then I traded with the Fletcher until I was able to buy a Power 1 bow. Not great, but it's better than nothing. Next, I went into the nether in hopes of getting some blaze rods, but the Pokemon weren't dropping them. Starmie ended up just killing itself, but even with my other Pokemon and my sword, I had no luck. By day 50, I had installed the Simple Backpacks mod, which unsurprisingly, add some simple backpacks. You need wool to make them, well, the normal backpack at least, so I headed out and killed a few sheep and will lose until I had enough wool. Then I went back home and crafted a backpack. I finished off the day by clearing out a few trees and lighting up my base. Because day 53, I changed the game's difficulty to easy, since I don't think Cobblemon is meant to be played in peaceful mode like Pixelmon is, but I also wasn't setting it any higher than that to not ruin the Pokemon experience. Anyway, the game turned back into Minecraft real quick, as I went into the nether and got attacked by a ghast. I smacked him with his own fireball, and started traversing the nether in hopes of a fortress. It took pretty much all day, but I was able to locate one. Day 54, I made it inside and killed a few wither skeletons and found a blaze spawner. Spent most of the day farming them there, which was a bit difficult, until I had gotten a little more than enough and made my way back to my portal, which wasn't hard thanks to my waypoints. Day 55, I caught a polywirl and then decided to let Torterra walk around. That was interesting. Anyway, I was leveling up a cleric villager to hopefully get ender pearls. I eventually got to the point where I needed rabbit feet, and started heading to the oak and birch forest to beat up Baneeris. It started getting dark, and to avoid monsters spawning, I slept there. Then I spent literally all of day 56 doing nothing but slaughtering Baneeris. I chopped down a couple trees in the process, but other than that, it was just a straight up Baneeri massacre. And I ended the day with 12 carrots, 3 rabbit hide, and the rabbit's foot that I brought with me. Day 57 I started heading home, since this clearly wasn't going to work out. And on the way, I killed several more Baneeris, none of which dropped their feet. And that sounded weird. <laughs> then I arrived back at the jungle, where I sorted my inventory and went to bed. So day 58, I used sticks and gold to level up the villager. And luckily, he sold me ender pearls. So I spent the rest of the day doing some trading, fighting a creeper, and harvesting melons. And I finally moved my floating bed into the floor so it didn't look stupid. Spent day 59 making emeralds, tearing down the jungle, and scavenging the nether for gold ore. Day 60, I bought one more ender pearl and crafted 16 eyes of ender, and literally the first one broke. I didn't make it far from the jungle when I was beating up a Rhyhorn, and decided to head back to swap out Yanmega for Scyther. She was lower level than everyone else on the team, so I fought a couple weaker Pokemon in the jungle. So by the time I actually started the journey to find the stronghold, the day was over. So day 61 was the day in which I actually set out to find the stronghold. 
on the way, I passed through a swamp biome and caught a Grimer. Not long afterwards, I saw a Kabomon Murkrow up close for the first time. I had enough Eyes of Ender going back and forth to pretty much pinpoint the location of the stronghold, and while I was slightly off, it was on the minimap, so I started making my way there. Then on day 62, I realized that what I thought was the stronghold was just a mineshaft. Turns out, I had pinpointed pretty much the exact location, it was just obstructed on the minimap, and I had seen the mineshaft first. Then it took me ages to find the portal room. I'm telling you, this was so difficult. It took days. Nah, just kidding. I just looked at the minimap and dug through a wall. I set my spawn point to the room, and ironically, the one time I bring enough eyes to fill an empty portal, the portal has eyes in it. Anyway, I lit the portal and hopped in. We're fighting the dragon early. I will say the combination of the game being on easy, no fear of dying because I wasn't in hardcore mode, and the fact that I'd already done this twice in the past few months, the Ender Dragon fight wasn't really a big deal. For once, I felt comfortable just standing in the open. Day 63 began as I took out the last end crystal, and the dragon was definitely scared of me. He stayed mostly on the opposite side of the island. But in the end, this was probably my least intense Ender Dragon fight yet. He's dead. Celebrated by catching an Elgium. And for once in my life, the end gateway didn't generate over the void. Then I began poking around the outer end, making sure to snag some chorus fruit. That's literally the whole reason I'm here. And on the very edge of the render distance, you can see and end city. By day 64, I was inside, dominating, and getting loot, like these Feather Falling boots. Feather Falling would probably be my favorite enchantment if Swift Sneak didn't exist. The remainder of the city was pretty smooth sailing, and after getting all the loot, I left the outer end, snagged the dragon egg, and left the end overall. Day 65, I found a golet, which I wanted to catch, and succeeded in doing. Then I had to make my way out of the stronghold. Ah! I followed pretty much anything that could lead me out of the cave, looted chests, random holes in the wall, torches, until eventually I made it to the surface. I made my way back home, arriving at the jungle around sunset. The following day, I cooked some chorus, and finally crafted a link cable, meaning at long last, I was able to evolve my scyther into- Apparently you need honeycomb to craft a metal coat? Why haven't I done that yet? Okay, so I started heading toward the spawn chunks in hopes that a beehive had generated in them and had been producing honey this whole time. The problem is that I had left my bed in the stronghold portal room, so I had to run through the darkness while getting chased by monsters, until I made it all the way back to the original village where I slept in a bed that was just in the open. Not sure what that was about. Day 67, I snagged the bed, and then skimmed through the nearby forests for bees, until finding a hive that thankfully provided me with some honeycomb. So now, I have to walk another 2100 blocks to get home. I knocked out a couple Pokemon on the way to give Scyther some experience, but then decided if I was going to make it home before nightfall, I needed to pick up the pace. And that became the last thing on my mind when a Snorlax spawned in, and it was freaking huge. You gotta understand where I'm coming from. You see this, you can't pass it up. It was definitely the hardest thing to catch so far, but in the end, I caught him, and had to sleep in a tree. Day 68, I arrived home and crafted a metal coat. I gave it to Scyther, used the link cord, and evolved him into a Scizor. Only took me 68 days, but I finally had my favorite Pokemon. So I decided to let my entire team out of their Pokeballs, and it got very chaotic very quickly. This is why mods exist. Just to fool around and have fun. Finished off the glorious day by harvesting some apricorns. I'm gonna need these tomorrow, because I spent most of tomorrow making a bunch of different types of Pokeballs. I did that because Cobblemon has some custom advancements, and while I wasn't going to try getting all of them, since one requires finding a shiny, and my shiny luck is terrible, but I at least wanted to complete the two that require you to make a bunch of Pokeballs. Then I climbed up a tree to get a good look at the jungle, and started chopping some trees on the southern shore. Day 70 I continued doing nothing but chopping all day. Chopped so much day 71 I had to downgrade the stone axes. 
I was checking out these vines that weren't attached to anything when I noticed some pillagers in the water. Besides that, I found a Trico, the first wild starter I'd seen, and I caught it. Day 72, I was met by some creepers, but slaughtered them in my greatness. Then at the end of the day, I got a good look at the sunset. If you're wondering what happened in between those things, just look at day 73. After another day of chopping, it was finally time to start placing endstone. Yep, the whole point of this is turning the overworld into the end in Kabelmon. Why? I don't know. Also, I had been eating a ton of apples during this, and I finally got the leftovers, which I gave to Snorlax. Day 76, I was about to make some Pokeballs to get the advancements when the game crashed. That's new. Anyway, I was able to make the original Apricorn Balls. And then I had to figure out which ball I needed for the other advancement. After mining some gold in the nether, I made almost every type of Pokeball, before realizing that I hadn't even made the normal one. <laughs> so day 77, I finally made the classic Pokeball. And it turns out, I have a new advancement to complete. Great. Anyway, I needed a lot more end stone, but had some problems finding my way back to the end. First off, Torterra got freaking destroyed, and then it turns out I never added a waypoint to the stronghold. Heck. Day 78, I had to navigate my way through the caves to find the stronghold, which was kinda hard, so I just dug back down to it. Oh hey, look a bed! Upon re-entering the end and teaching my scissor swords dance, I was brutally informed of how slowly stone pickaxes mine endstone, and I need a ton of this stuff. On the bright side, due to Elgium and Behem being the only Pokemon that spawn, the end is a pretty good training ground for Umbreon. Day 70, I dug up to the surface, thus creating a new tunnel that went straight to the portal room. I randomly decided to catch an autumn form deerling, and on the way home I found a ruined portal. But the loot was pretty bad, so I just took the gold blocks. I also caught a Rhyhorn, and then slept on the beach across from the jungle. Then, day 81, I realized that I was going to need a lot more endstone than I thought I would. I'm about to have PTSD from something that happens in 2000 days. Haven't seen Kangaskhan yet, might as well catch it. Uh... Well, I made pretty good progress day 83, so maybe this isn't the worst thing in the world. I will never escape this slavery that is placing down one type of block hundreds of times. Day 85, I realized that the area I was changing to Endstone looked less like the end and more like just a beach. I also ran out of endstone. What the heck? Before I went back to the end again, I went ahead and planted some chorus flowers and also stared into the sunset. I wasn't paying much attention, I was just stalling time. Day 86, I was going back to the end. On the way, I encountered a grottle, which I decided to battle with Torterra. All I had to do was curse a couple times and then take it out with Earthquake, and it dropped a miracle seed which I promptly gave to Torterra. Then, after seeing another Snorlax, I found a Torkoal, which I wanted. My own Snorlax was able to simultaneously paralyze it and knock it down to 1 HP with Body Slam, and after catching the Volcano Tortoise, a thunderstorm started, cutting the day short, and making it so I wouldn't spawn back at the jungle when I left the end. Day 87, I mined up two stacks of Endstone and was, as expected, teleported to my original spawn point. I spent most of the day running home, eventually coming across a bamboo jungle, which looked very cool. By the time the sun had set, I was on my end beach, where I slept. So, day 88, I finished up the end beach. The rest of the day was just chores, harvesting melons, sugarcane, and apricorns, and also making some more Ultra Balls before my next big journey. And that journey starts today! Now equipped with a level 43 Torkoal, I set my nature compass to point me towards a biome I hadn't been to at all in this playthrough, Snowy Plains. It wasn't super far away, I passed through a village with a blacksmith who had nothing good, and also saw a very mad looking Panko. But as the day was ending, I arrived in the white wasteland and caught a swine up. Day 90, I explored the snowy biomes, catching a Bergmite and an Ice Q. I found a shipwreck, but the only loot worth taking was some coal 
and a clock, since the treasure map got messed up due to the glitch. I didn't really find anything new in the Snowy Taigas, mostly the same Pokémon as all the other forests, but a straight up Weird Ear spawned, so I weakened it with Scizor and caught him. I was just catching a seal on day 91 when I saw a Piplup, which may I say, is freaking adorable. And this dude wasn't gonna catch easily. He straight up took out Scizor and took several Pokeballs, but I still got him. Then I chopped down a couple spruce trees and began heading home. How many times have I said that in this video? As soon as I arrived back in the jungle, an Onyx spawned in, which gave me a good idea. Giant Rock Snake versus Tiny Penguin. Piplup won, and then I evolved him into Prinplup. I used that spruce wood to finally add a floor to my storage. And then I pulled Trico out of the box, and evolved him into Grovile. My final quest for this video was evolving both of these starters, so I spent all day training Prinplup in the nether. It was kind of awkward. He got knocked out by two different Scorches. Returned day 94, avoiding Scorch, and it didn't take long to evolve Prinplup into Empoleon. Now it's time for Grovile into Sceptile. This is gonna take a little more time. Day 95, I headed over to the mountains to potentially fight Geodudes and got destroyed by a Baneri. So I went all the way back home, grabbed my healing machine, and went back to the mountains and just started beating up rocks. Hiya! Day 97, I slaughtered a man in the swamp and took his llamas down with him. Then I got Grovile to level 36, evolving it into a beautiful tree lizard. Look at these two. They're amazing! I returned to the jungle on this great day and got jump scared by a Galvantula. I took him out day 98 and then spent all day training up the main team of Pokemon I had throughout this video. Scizor, Crobat, Arcanine, Snorlax, Sorterra, and Umbreon. A lot of these guys haven't been mentioned in a while. Towards the end of the day, I beat up a Diglett, and it dropped a big root, and then a Kingler decimated Torterra with Guillotine. The crab put up a decent fight, so I decided to catch it. Day 99, I just got some shots of the Pokémon to potentially use in the thumbnail, and also sent everybody out again. This is always chaotic. And then, I watched the sunset, as my time here came to an end. And here we are. Day 100. I'm recording this last bit of the video after I've edited everything else. And I have to say, this was one of the most painful video making experiences that I've ever had. Hopefully you had more fun watching this video than I did making it because it took hecking forever. And if you did enjoy it, maybe hit the like button, and if you want to see more content from me, make sure to subscribe. But aside from that, I really don't have anything else to say, besides that this will be my last 100 days video until 2000 days. And I have no clue when that's coming out. So until then, I don't know how to outro videos, so have a nice day.